Hola, buenos dias, my beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another video. It's your girl Daniela, aka Miss Four Lizard, aka the Planning Diva, and I'm so excited to be bringing to you a planner video. I'm going to be talking and sharing with you today five things that you can do in your planner besides plan. So if you're interested in hearing about that, just keep on watching. All right, so this is a little bit different from the normal planner content I do, and I want to keep on bringing fresh, new, interesting, cool content to you. So definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below about this video. But this video was inspired by the fact that so many people who aren't quote unquote planners, um, meaning that they, they aren't in a planning community, they don't have more than three planners. I mean, not that you need to have more than three planners or be in a community to be a planner, but you know, the planner babes and planners who are in a planner community and planners who have more than three planners are definitely on a next level of planning than the typical planner. I mean like you don't that doesn't make you a good planner it doesn't make one planner better than the other at all but i'm just saying that there are levels to this there are levels to planning and a lot of people who are um, who aren't planners meaning that they're just not very intensive planners we always are a little bit surprised that i am so into planning and i have multiple planners i have 15 planners i'm in a planning community i make planning content for other planners like people who aren't in the world of planning are always like a little surprised that i have so many planners and they're just confused about what i do with them and to be honest i totally understand that because before I was a planner and before I was in the planning community, I also didn't really understand what people did with so many planners because, I mean, I've always been a planner in that I've had an agenda, I've had a planner, I would, you know, write down my appointments, I would write down my schedule for the day, I was always someone who did organize their life, but even I did not understand why people had multiple planners I did not get it and now that I am in the planning community and I have experimented with planners and planning and I've really dove into the world I understand why people have so many planners I understand why there is a planning community and I also get now that people don't always just plan in their planners and planners can be tools and spaces and places for other types of activities that also help you um, organize your life, help you uh, to, to reach your greatest potential. So this is what this video is about. It's about what you can do in your planner besides planning. Because I have an idea that people think that all you can do in your planner is, you know, write down your upcoming appointments, write down important things that are happening in your life, you know, upcoming birthdays, upcoming trips. And it's people, I think people think that it's very much like you're writing down things that are eventually going to happen. I mean, that's the idea of planning, right? Like you're setting up a timeline, you're setting up dates. Um, it's very like forward thinking, projecting into the future type of work. But I'm here to tell you that you can definitely do various other things in your planner besides planning. And so let's get into it. So I have here one of my mega happy planners. I'm a happy planner girl. So all you'll see here is happy planner um, planners. But I have seven different planners combined into this one planner right here. I actually have 15 different planners, but eight of them live in my other mega happy planner, which is my baby Andromeda. This girl, she's known as Cassiopeia here, and she is my fun happy planner because um, I have a lot of fun with her. My other one is more of my workhorse. She's a bit more functional. She's a bit more serious. She's a bit more grown up. This one is like um, the wild, crazy hippie daughter. 
Miss Cassiopeia. And we're just gonna um, flip to a couple of sections so I can show you, and I'm just gonna share with you uh, my planner and uh, examples of what I'm talking about when I talk about the five different things that you can do in your planner besides planning. So let's start with number one. One thing that you can do in your planner besides planning is journaling. So um, some people have journals separate from their planners. I used to be someone that had a journal separate from my planner and I just never really got into being consistent with it. And when I started incorporating it into my planner, I started being a lot more consistent with my journaling. And journaling is super important for self-reflection, for processing, for um, emotional development. Highly recommend journaling. So this here is my planner section that I dedicate to journaling. I use a horizontal layout. Um, from the happy planner and I just decorate the pages and whenever I feel so inclined I journal about whatever it is I'm feeling particularly um, when I'm feeling stressed when I'm dealing with some kind of uh, emotional drama some spiritual existential crisis I will journal in here and you do not have to have a completely different section to journal in. You can just journal in your regular planner. You could write a few sentences. You do not have to write whole paragraphs. Um, you can, if you have like a regular kind of vertical style planner like this, you could just write in a box a few sentences about what you're feeling. Journaling is such an amazing tool to reflect and to process and it's good for meditation and mindfulness. It helps you kind of work through any turbulent emotions that you might be having, just even writing down um, whatever it is you're feeling sad, mad, upset, you know, just writing it down, just the act of writing it down relieves some of that tension. And so it's actually uh, an amazing thing for you know mental and emotional self-care. So journaling, definitely something that you can do in your planner. It's not necessarily something you plan, right? Um, but it's a space that you can start working into that habit and exercising that practice. So journaling. So the second thing that you can do in your planner besides plan is brainstorm. So um, let's say that you have uh, something that you want to work on, a project you want to work on, and you just need to develop that project for whatever reason, whether that be a household project, a work project, um, I don't know, whatever it be, there's something that you want to work on, but you're still kind of fleshing out the details about whatever that is. Um, that's called brainstorming, and it's great to write down your brainstorming ideas to kind of get them out on the page, to think about them a little bit more. So I always brainstorm about uh, what I need to do for my YouTube channel. So we're in my YouTube channel section in my planner here and um i'm trying to find a good example here this page right here so i had this idea that i wanted to make a video of five things to do except plan in your planner and so i started writing down what ideas i had for that video like what things besides planning do I do in my planner? And so I wrote them all down here using a little checklist, which is usually used for to-do lists, but I used it as a little brainstorming list. Um, and so that's what you see here is my brainstorming of the creation of this video. And it's something that I think a lot of people don't realize is such an important and integral step to creation and creativity and project fulfillment and reaching your goals is that first initial brainstorming session where you just give yourself some time to think and explore and experiment with what you want to produce so brainstorming that's such a big big initial um, step in project formation and so 
I do a lot of brainstorms in this section here uh, because it's my YouTube journal, or I mean, it's my YouTube uh, planner. And so there's a lot of times where I feel like I kind of want to, you know, produce fresh content. And so I give myself some time to brainstorm in this journal. So that is one of the things that I like doing in my planner besides plan is brainstorm okay and the third thing that you can do in your planner besides plan is doodle i mean you can see my notes here and i'm actually going to have to pull for my other planner my other mega planner to give you an example of this one but um yes doodling so as uh, sticker enthusiasts as i am sure you are if you're watching this video as sticker enthusiasts it's very clear that planners are very artistic and visual people we're very very visual and a lot of the times i think stickers are a great um art form a quick and easy art form to um to really work and exercise your creativity i mean i mean what we're doing when we're combining stickers when we're using stickers and washi tape and photos and you know using pen as well it's it's mixed media art we're we're engaging with a form of art that is very um that is very unique to a particular style i mean it's planning but it's mixed media we're using different mediums to create an overall aesthetic and something that you can do in your planner that kind of bring, can bring that creativity to the next level and can also bring a little bit of your own personal style more onto the page is to doodle, um, is to draw something. And, you know, if you're, if you're um, trying to actively um, practice your creativity and develop your artistic style, this is a great space to do it. So these are examples of little art pieces that I've done in my uh, nonprofit and community service planner. So this planner I use for all of um, my community service I do basically. And I am a content creator, I'm a science illustrator as part of my community service. And so I will create little art pieces like this and share them, you know, with social media uh, platforms. And as an artist myself, um, I am always trying to develop my artistic talents. And a lot of the times I get into ruts where I don't, you know, do any kind of art besides like planner, you know, art. And um, this is a really good way for me to, to make sure that I am practicing my art skills. Um, so here's another example of an art piece I did. What I like to do is I actually uh, tape in a piece of sketch paper so this is sketch paper from you know like an art artistic sketchbook i'll put a little washi tape frame around it and it gives me like a, a canvas here in my planner right alongside my to do's and everything that you know all my goals and so it's right there for me to just work in and i actually have been uh, doing a lot more art because of the fact that I incorporate it into my planner. It's not, you know, sectioned off. It's not just in a sketchbook, you know, underneath my desk or something. It's just right there and it's very easy for me to just get in there and work there. And the small scale of the canvas that I work into really makes it easy for me to just like fill the whole thing and get it done quickly. And so I'm really, really happy with these little sketches that I've done throughout the month. I've definitely started doing a lot more creative art um, ever since I started incorporating it into my planner. So that's one, another thing that you can do. That's the third thing that you can do in your planner besides plan. Okay, and then the fourth thing that you can do in your planner besides plan is to scrapbook. So um, I used to be a big scrapbooker and that was a lot of fun, but I kind of just stopped doing it after a while. I think the fact that I had like a whole other, you know, book for scrapbooking, really kind of, uh, it just, I kept on like forgetting about it. I wasn't drawn to it as much, but when your scrapbook is in the same book as your planning and as your um, doodling and brainstorming and journaling, when it's all put into one place, it's really, really accessible. And you're always reminded of the fact that it's there. And it's always, you know, you know, the saying where it's out of sight, out of mind. Well, if it's always in sight, it's always in mind. And scrapbooking is something that, um, 
I've always really enjoyed. I just forget about it at times. But when it's in my planner, I can't forget about it because it's there. So this is a section in my planner that is my scrapbook. And it's basically just a journal. Uh, I don't journal in it in the sense that I don't self-reflect. I journal in it in the sense that I kind of, um, uh, I describe what happened you know, during an event or during a vacation. I talk about what went down. Um, it's more of like a storytelling type of writing than it is a self-reflection, introspective form of writing, which is what journaling is. So I just write down like, you know, if I have lunch with my boyfriend, if we go out on a date, if I hang out with friends and we went to go to a cool restaurant, I'll write down all that stuff here. This is the planner where I use the most photos. Um, I like taking photos and I'll just uh, fill my planner with photos and memories. And I'm hoping that, you know, when I'm like 60, 70 years old, I can look back at all these memories and just think about like the great life I had and be very grateful for all the things that I got to experience. And it just helps me remember things a lot more and it warms my heart to see everything, you know, that I had the privilege and the blessing to experience. So. Here I had a vacation in Mexico. I just journaled about what happened. And again, this writing is very much like just kind of telling a story. It's not so much, um, it's not so much me thinking about what I'm feeling inside. All though that kind of writing is a lot more personal and it goes into my journal. And I guess I could combine those two sections together, like journal, you can journal and scrapbook in the same section. But for me, I separate them right now because a lot of the times I want to share these spreads with friends and with family, but I don't necessarily want to share my diary with them, if that makes sense. So I, for me, it's good to like keep these separate for now because I just, my diary and my journal section is a lot more personal. There are things I write in there that, you know, if my mom or my boyfriend read them they might be upset they might get hurt or something um it's just a space for me that's a little bit more private and this is a little bit more uh just i just let i want to share this with people so this is my scrapbooking section something else that you can do in your planner besides planning and i do actually plan in this planner so this is the upcoming week and as you can see here i have a couple of things going on but I don't really like set things in stone until after they've happened because plans change, people cancel, people reschedule, you know, life happens. It's not always gonna go according to plan. And for me, um, I'd rather just kind of wait until things happen for me to like, you know, start really decorating and stickering and having a little bit more of a permanent, um, you know, permanent planning here. So as you can see, I have things planned out, but I don't decorate until, you know, the end of the week, usually. Okay, and the last thing that you can do in your planner besides plan, I mean, that I'm gonna talk about today because there are a million things that you can do in your planner besides plan, the last one I'm gonna talk about today though is research. So as a research scientist myself, I believe in the power of data research and data analysis. And what I mean when I talk about research is um, if you are interested in a particular thing, whether that be sleep hygiene, whether that be nutrition, there's so much information in the world out there. And it really, really helps to um, kind of condense information that's out there and process it yourself. And we do that through writing it down, you know, reworking it in our own words and just spending a little bit time, of time with that information. So let's see if I can find um, an example here of that. I might have to go into my other planner. 
Um, let's see, yes, let's go into this section here. So here is my news section, my current events section. So this is a planner section where I journal about things that I listen to on the news or things that I read, articles I read. And I am a huge news listener. I try to listen to the news every single day for at least five minutes. And unfortunately, I'm the type of person that doesn't remember a lot of things if I don't write them down. And so this is what you see here. Um, I'll listen to the news and I'll write down two, three, four things a day of the most important thing I listened to or I learned about that day. And at the end of the week, I can just kind of look back and see what was going on in the world. And also it helps me to follow news stories a little bit better to, to understand the shifting narrative of COVID or Afghanistan, I can kind of keep track of how things have developed over time. Um, another example of research and data collection, data analysis, it doesn't have to be external either. Like you don't have to find that information outside and then process it. You can uh, produce that information internally and process it. So this is an example of that here. Um, so this is my bedtime routine. It's just a little uh, spread that I did kind of highlighting the most important things that I want to capture in my bedtime routine. And then I have a couple of sleep logs. So I have a Fitbit and it helps me keep track of um, my sleep time, my wake time, my total sleep, my sleep score, how long I spent in different stages of sleep. And um, I keep track of all of that information here. Um, as you can see, I've just filled rows and rows and rows on my sleep statistics. And I also keep track of my mood. Um, every single day, I keep track of my mood to get a sense of how my sleep impacts my mood and particularly how different aspects of my sleep inter uh, in impact my mood. So I keep track of my wake time, my sleep time, the total time I fell asleep, and I see if there's a, a, a pattern, a pattern into how different sleep regimens affect my mood. I understand myself and my sleep patterns and how they affect my mood in a very, very detailed way, and I get to see in a very clear way how my mood is impacted by my sleep patterns. This is very, very important to me because I am someone who does not like to sleep because I am, I just love, you know, being up and doing things. I'm a very busy person and I tend to like to cheat my sleep and sleep is very, very important. It's important to have a great sleep hygiene. And so I'm always trying to find out where my sweet spot is of sleep. How much should I sleep? At what time do I get up to feel the best? These are the questions I kind of have. And when you start collecting all this data, you start you start being able to see patterns in in it and that is what i'm doing with my sleep logs is trying to see the patterns in my sleep and to get a sense of myself and my sleep in a more intimate way so that's my sleep log this is a form of research this is a form of data collection and like i said it can be internal it can be external as with the news and in terms of information processing if you're learning something it's also a planner is also a great way to uh, kind of continue to develop that learning and stay consistent with that learning. So this is my Japanese journal. It's in a planner, but it's kind of more like a workbook for me. I don't really stick to the days um, like a traditional planner. I kind of just like write all over the page, but I still like working in a planner because it reminds me that there is a timeline to this learning and encourages me to kind of get into this section a little bit each day or even every other day because it kind of reminds me that this is something that should be, you know, like consistent throughout my days. Planners are just a great way to process information, um, to collect data, to do research on, to take notes in, really use them as a workbook. Think of it more as a workbook, less of a planner. Like yes, you can plan on it, but that is just scratching the surface of what planners allow you to do. And at the end of the day, they're just blank pages with a timeline kind of uh, superimposed on it. 
and you can do absolutely anything with a blank page all right everyone i hope you enjoyed this video definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below about what you thought about this and let me know your suggestions for things that you can do in your planner besides plan there's millions of things that you can do in your planner besides plan i would love to know your favorite non-planning things to do in your planner besides plan let me know in the comments down below and i will catch you in my next video bye